time to get your knitting on. This one's going to require some inlay work though. Well, it's a new week, so it's a new project. This week it's the knitting bowl. I don't make a ton of these. Um, it's kind of a niche market. Um, I was actually approached probably about five years ago by a woman that did a lot of knitting and said, can you make me a knitting bowl? And I'm like, sure, I've never did one before. But, but uh, anyway, I've sold a number of them since then and they, they're actually quite popular. I seem to sell every one that I make, so I should probably make more of them. But yeah, I'm just using the David Ellsworth gouge on the outside here, the 5 8 bowl gouge, which is my preferred bowl gouge. You know, and, and of course, I didn't show mounting the waste block on the bottom of the bowl this week like I've done the last couple of weeks. By the way, it's just hot melt glue in a frying pan if you're new here and you've never seen this before. And I dip the waste block in the hot melt glue and stick it on the bottom of the bowl. And of course, this bowl's been dried down to 7%, so it's good and dry. Now, in order to um, probably make a, a really effective knitting bowl, it should be kind of a semi-enclosed type form. You can use a, a normal bowl, but I think that um, if it's semi-enclosed like this bowl blank is, it tends to um, it tends to work better. Yeah, so here you can see I'm shear scraping the surface. Of course, you really can't do that on the inside of the bowl. This is normal speed here. It's nice light cuts. Yeah, so here we are on the rim. Again, nice light cuts. There is a bark inclusion there, so I'm a little worried about uh, pulling some stuff out of there. So I'm just kind of going easy on it. A little bit of chatter there. And these, these uh, bowls that have the rims that are undercut, they can be a little bit of a challenge to do. Um, just, you know, once you put the tool on its side and once you get a shoulder there where you can rest the bevel of the tool, you'll be fine. I really like the David Ellsworth 5 8 bowl, uh, bowl gouge. It's, it's probably the... It is for sure the, the most used uh, wood turning tool that I use. You know, pull cuts, push cuts. Uh, I'm just really trying to uh, get this thing down round. You hear him checking the thickness. You do want these bowls to be fairly hefty. That way, uh, when the yarn is pulled out, that it doesn't, the bowl doesn't come with it. little closer view so yeah this is a pick tool um, actually that this one's made by snap-on that's from a former mechanics life that I had and um, but if next time you're at the dentist if you don't have a pick tool ask to see if you can get some of their picks because after a while they have to throw them out and you never know you might end up with one and that way you don't gotta buy one that's where I've gotten them in the past anyway see I want to leave this one natural I don't want to get in there and grind out a bunch of stuff so my favorite inlay the uh, the blue soapstone there's actually a link in the description uh, to Lee Valley where you can buy uh, soapstone blocks, that's this stuff here. And also Sculptural Supply in Toronto has a, has a listing there for uh, different types of soapstone. So make sure you check them out. And again, it's easy to tool, easy to sand. So you know, this, is, this is the main reason why I use it. And it's, it's a beautiful contrast in color. Now point to a crack there, I was a little worried that when I put the glue in that, that it was going to run out there. It actually didn't. 
Again, Starbond Thin, link in the description for 10% off your next order. Just use code Inlay Gym at checkout. And of course, the accelerator, both I use a ton of. If you've been here before, you know that too. So yeah, just keep adding to it, pouring the glue on it. Use the accelerator to set it in place so it's not running everywhere. So we are back on the lathe. I find it's always uh, better to trim it with the gouge than try and sand it off. You, you'll, you'll use way less sandpaper. And there's a good example of a shear cut. The tool handles drop down. And it will produce long, thin ribbons. And touching up the rim. Yeah, this easy wood tools finisher. I figured that um, I wanted to round over the top of it and not leave it like a, a normal looking bowl. And it did a good job actually cutting that back. So again, second filling, you're going to have to do this two or three times, maybe even four times before you've got it all filled in. So back on the lathe, uh, cutting the inlay back again. And again, the main reason why I do that is just so that I don't use um, a ton of sandpaper. And this, of course, is real speed here. Nice, gentle, gentle cuts. And you can see those long ribbons. And I mean, that's on wood that's dried to 7%. This isn't green. There you go. That's what you're looking for. That'll do. So when you um, put your J-hook on here, you don't want to put it on your end grain because uh, once this is, you know, cut in a J, this here won't be very stable, so it's best to do it on your side grain. Something like that. Yeah, so I'm just using a 7 16 inch drill bit, and uh, I typically like to drill the hole first and then um, carve out the, um, the J. Again, Typhoon bit. There, all, the, all the products you see here, there's a link in the description where you can get them. Uh, this one came from Lee Valley. And, you know, I've tried a variety of ways to, to cut this and to cut it nicely and you know so far I found that this is probably one of the best ways I gotta order a new one this one's actually starting to wear out so yeah just take your time and try not to um, 
be too aggressive with it because it can skate and then all of a sudden you've got a, a big hole where you didn't want one. Get a little bit of a flare at the end. And of course sanding. Lots of lots of hand sanding to clean out this this uh, little hook. I start with 80 and then I end up finishing with 320, just like you know when I'm sanding the bowls. It's actually the worst part of it because I don't like hand sanding. If I can power sand everything, I'd power sand everything. It's pretty hard to do that here. Again, drilling a hole on the other side. Little chamfer bit. I can't even remember where I bought that one, so I can't even really tell you where to get one. But any place you, um, you can buy drill bits, you're probably going to be able to find this as well. And this is just a little quarter inch drum sander that goes in my Dremel tool. It's a handy little rig to have. Again, lots of sanding, starting with 80 grit to 320. So these discs are three and a half inch nipple discs and they're from sandpaper.ca. There is a link in the description for 10% off your next order. Just use code InlayGym at checkout. And I really like these dimple discs because they fold around the edge of the sanding pad and you get less dig-ins with them. The sanding pad that I'm using actually comes from there as well. So make sure you check them out. So yeah, we're sanding from 60 to 320. Every now and then I'll go to 400, but I find that it's usually not needed. Once I get into resin work, well, that'll be a different story. And again, as you can see, it just kicks up a pile of dust and so make sure you wear some sort of a respirator. I have a three horsepower dust collector and it's still at the end of the week will still be a ton of dust laying on everything in my shop. Okay, first coat, wood bowl finish by General Finishes. So it's 12 o'clock right now. I'll put this in my drying room, or my clean room. And then I'll put another coat on it at the end of the day. That way I can put the third coat on tomorrow morning and then uh, the finish is usually cured enough that I can then finish the bottom same day. Of course, first coat gets put on really heavy. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I'm using um, the blue Scott towel. I think that's what they're called. Anyway, if I, if I can find the link, I'll put it in the description as well. Um, I was using cotton rags, and I found I was getting a lot of lint. And I've used them for years, and then I said, oh, I'm going to give this a try. And you know what? I'm, I'm very happy. Make sure we get all down in here. And of course you want to wipe off any excess. You don't want uh, any runs or sags in your inner finish. It's usually not a big deal in the first coat. Yeah, so here I'm using 4 steel wool like I usually do. 
And yeah, some of it's going to get ripped out for sure. Uh, but I just do I do find that uh, it does a better job of surface prep than the Scotch Bright pads do. Here comes the second coat. So that was five hours from uh, when I put the first coat of finish on until now. I find typically you can do that. Um, the third and final coat though, I, so I like to have this set overnight and then I'll put the third and final coat on tomorrow morning. There, I'll just do the J hook. Actually, I don't even really know what this is called. That's what I'll call it anyway. Okay, so I got asked the other day to show a can of the finish. This is actually an older can. This is salad bowl finish. Right now, uh, it's called wood bowl finish. They changed the name on it. But anyway, that's what the can looks like. For those who are curious but it would say wood bowl finish i buy uh the finish by it by the case so this is finished from last year that i'm trying to use up this is the last coat so it's nine o'clock in the morning right now uh this will sit all day and at the end of the day I should be able to cut this off the waste block and uh, do the bottom of the bowl. So yeah, it's a two-day turnaround to uh, to get a finish like this. But you know, if you're into shiny finishes, this is it. And the thing is, it's gonna it's gonna retain its shine. I can't say the same thing for shellacs over time, but. Uh, Certainly this stuff will retain its shine. Pretty nice. Yeah, so it's later on in the day here. I'm using uh, the 16 3 16 parting tool. And these bowls, uh, I typically like to have, have the base maybe a little wider than normally, just to give it some more stability. And that hot melt glue, it's pretty tough stuff. It's hard to do this stuff when the camera's in the way. And as you can see, this is, uh, you know, there's probably two inches holding that on. And it's still pr plenty strong. So I usually cut a lot of this out of here, but it just kind of shows you what I go through to get the uh, bowl mounted on the vacuum chuck. Now, if you're turning inboard, you can actually use uh, a reference mark. You can see it on the bottom of the bowl, and you won't have to go through this. So again, light cuts here. There's about 23 inches of vacuum holding this on, so it's on there very good, and it takes a lot to pull it off. And usually I start at uh, 180 and then sand to 320, uh, and that's because there's no end grain on the base of these bowls. It's usually all face grain, so it sands uh, quite easily.
Yeah, you don't need to put the bowl back onto the vacuum chuck to put the uh, finish on the bottom, but I don't know, I like to. I get it on there more evenly. But anyway, let's uh, let's have a talk about this bowl and finish this video up. Well, all right, that's it for the video. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, this was actually a special order. A customer ordered a couple of these uh, in the springtime, so that kind of shows you how far behind I am. I know that there's some people waiting for orders. Uh, I, I'm getting to them I'll, and I'll do them as fast as I can. So please be patient. Um, so anyway, let's have a last look at this. And again, this is um, maple with soapstone. And here's the, I call this a J-hook. And of course the hole on the other side if they want to come out that way with the yarn. Um, yeah, so that's it. Oh. So this ended, up, this ended up being 10 inches by four inches. That's how big this is. And let's not forget about our 15,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. And again, this is walnut with muscle shells and copper pipe. So that will be when I hit 15,000 subscribers, I will actually mail this off worldwide to the winner. We'll draw a name and I'll get it out in the mail to them. Uh, but of course you have to have an open profile or not a private profile so that I can see that you've subscribed to my channel so I can actually pick your name. So that's it. Next week uh, we might actually try something with some bark next week. Uh, I don't even know. I don't even think we've done that here yet. So that'll be next, next week's project. So anytime you can give my videos a thumbs up certainly helps with the analytics. Share it on your social media platforms is awesome as well. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so especially if you want this bowl. So that's it. Till next week, take care, stay safe, and don't forget the bell. See ya.